every day we are encountering thousands and thousands of pathogens and it turns out our body's immune system can mount a defense response against them so how does our immune system does that one of the component of our immune system is b cell against the pathogenic antigens b cells produce antibodies actually b cells get differentiated into antibody secreting plasma cells now these plasma cells can specifically mount immune response against a pathogenic antigen so there are thousands of antigens could be produced by a single pathogen itself and imagine there are so many pathogens and our immune system need to be diverse in terms of creating new versions of antibodies such that it can encounter the pathogenic antigens so this diversity is required for antibody production question is how does this diversity achieved in terms of antibody production or how does diverse antibodies with different affinity and avidity for a particular antigen is created and the answer lies in a genetic recombination which happens in the anti antibody uh, light chain and heavy chain genes so in this video we'll talk about vdj recombination it turns out we have 51 v 27 d and 6 j gene segments so not so the simple thing is we don't have one gene segment for heavy chain or the light chain of the antibodies we have multiple gene segments now what is the importance of having so many different segments it turns out these several segments could be joined in a sequence for example this diversity and j segment can join together by a recombination process known as dj recombination further the v d j these segments could be joined in vdj recombination process and thereby can create a different transcript depending upon which combinations they are combining and that can give rise to antibodies heavy chain now in a combute in a combinatorial manner huge diversity could be produced itself in the heavy chain forget about the light chain for a moment but itself in the heavy chain using a combinatorial code a plasma cell can produce huge variety of antibodies now we talk about the light chain light chain doesn't have the j segment so doesn't have the diversity segment i'm sorry but it has the v and j segments which could be recombining together by vj recombination to give rise to specific transcript which can form specific light chain segments now not only b cells or b cell receptors or antibodies undergoes this kind of recombination to produce diversity it turns out that p cell receptor and t cell receptor all undergoes this kind of recombination to produce the p cell receptor or t cell receptor now vdj recombination is dependent upon two different components first the recombination signal sequence present in the gene segments second the recombinase enzyme that helps in recombination so it turns out after every gene segments there are small signal sequences these signal sequences are either known as one turn sequences or two turn sequences the one turn sequences have 12 base pairs spacer in between them whereas two turn has 23 base pair spacers between them and there is a joining rule between these gene se segments and these recombination signal sequences the rule says that opposite uh, turns can join together for example a one turn sequence can join with a two turn sequence but the similar ones cannot join with each other this ensures that the gene segments recombine in a proper order and also the internal recombination between itself let's say the diversity segment or itself rec uh, between the uh, joining segments cannot happen so the intra 
segmental recombination cannot happen by following this rule so which is a clever way of designing this recombination system that evolved throughout time now let's talk about the enzymes which are necessary for this recombination process as expected since it's a recombination process there should be specific recombinase so there are two recombinase of rag1 which is known as recombinase associated gene that pro their product give rise to rag1 and rag2 recombinases which are most important recombinases for pdj recombination apart from that terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase or tdt is also involved in this process now b cell development starts in the bone marrow right after its development in the bone marrow it moves to the lymph node where it gets matured and learn how to encounter and encounter pathogens now inside the bone marrow there are vascular niche and endosteal niche where several stages of the b cells could be found let us look at which stage of the b cell this vdj recombination is taking place so in early in, in pre pro b cell stage the pre pro b cell gets attached to the uh, bone marrow stromatal cell where and one important interaction is scf and ckit and also it expresses several chemokine receptors such as cxcl12 receptor so all these signals give rise to dj recombination at this particular point of time of the heavy chain later when it progresses to early pro b cell stage then interleukin derived from the stromatal cells to give rise to specific signaling that helps in total vdj recombination process other than these uh, external signals the external signals impinge upon internal signals onto internal transcription factors which helps in this process maybe by producing the recombinases gene or many other aspects of the recombination so we we'll look at what happens when il7 mediated signaling comes and how does the b cell how does the immature b cell uh, read that signal so here is il7 il7 give rise to jackstat mediated signaling which allow transcription which allow the activation of several transcription factors like epf1 pax5 etc all of these help in vdj recombination or several aspects of vdj recombination so let's just look at quickly at the mechanism of vdj recombination so the first step of the recombination is the enzymes rag1 and rag2 should recognize the proper recombination signal sequence on the vdj gene segment so here you understand there is let's say we take a simple example of a light chain gene segments where we have v and j so here our recombination associated proteins uh, rag1 and rag2 is recognizing the signal sequences after that these enzymes use a dna looping mechanism by which this one turn and two turn rss are paired inside the active site of these enzymes and there is a cleavage of these one single strand by rag1 and rag2 after that these cleavage sequences form hairpins with each other and this is followed by a double stranded dna break by rag1 and rag2 so when the double stranded dna break occurs it need to be joined together and that joining process happens by nhej mediated mechanism where q70 or q80 binds to it followed by the binding of artemis dna pk and xrcc4 etc enzymes of all the nhej mechanism which give rise to joining of these gene segments and it now the mrna would be produced from this gene segment which would be later translated to give rise to the light chain now we talk about a little bit how this diversity could arise in terms of uh, 
after VDJ recombination or what are the mechanism of producing antibody diversity. So it turns out multiple germline gene segments are there that we looked at. So there is at least 51 V27 D and 6 J chains. That means possible combinations that could be achieved by using a combinated combination is at least more than rough about 8000. Apart from that, there is a junctional flexibility. That means whenever there is a double stranded break, when the segments join together, there is a flexibility in this joining process. Not only there is a junctional flexibility, whenever the double strand breaks happen, there could be new nucleotide addition to it, which is which accounts for diversity. And after all these things, there is a process known as somatic hypermutation, which creates even more diverse uh, antibodies. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like my video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.